Hi everybody, I'm Joe Parker of the Pixel Depot. My last video was the second in a series that I call Craft Store Craftiness, which is all about going to the craft store and purchasing materials that you can either use on your layout directly or to help you in your model railroading journey. In the first installment of that series, I had purchased some red pom-poms for 50 cents in the clearance section. At the time, I had mentioned that I would probably paint those up and use them as bushes. In the comments for that video, the hasty terrain maker asked me how that had gone. Well, I had to sheepishly admit that after I made that video, I threw the pom-poms in my scenery box and hadn't really thought about them since. However, his question prompted me to dig them out and to see what I could make of them. And that's what this video is going to be all about. So follow along as I turn these red pom-poms into bushes. So we've got a piece of scrap foam here. I'm going to coat this with tape and then put the pom-poms on it for painting. And what I'll typically do is put the sticky side down. Trim this up a little bit. The key is to make it not stick to your fingers, which isn't always the easiest thing to do. It doesn't go anywhere. Apparently, I had all my masking tape way too long because it all just wants to stick to itself. Let's open up our package of pom poms. I'm just going to kind of pour them out randomly here and see what we get. Spreading them out a little bit so that I'll be able to get paint coverage and on all the different sides and so on. Because yeah, we don't want the red really to show through much at all. I suppose you could make the case that some of the red would be berries or something like that. But I really would like to get them looking green rather than red. All right, so those are pretty well spread out. Now we're going to take them over to the paint booth. My thought is that I will hit it with some gray primer first to kind of tone down the red color so that the green will will take better and then we'll put a couple of different shades of green on there as well. I'll put links to the different colors of green spray paint in the description below so that you can purchase them if you'd like to. These will be affiliate links to Amazon so if you purchase through that link I will also get a little bit of that percentage and you'll help support the channel. I started with a coat of gray primer and because this was the first layer, it took a number of coats before I felt I could move on to the green colors. You'll also notice that some of the pom-poms rolled off the tape, but no big deal. I then moved on to the hunter green and my initial coats may have been a little bit heavy handed. But it got the green color on there quickly and provided a nice base for the lighter green highlights that I was about to put on. After that, I moved on to the moss green, but not before separating the pom-poms that had rolled together in order to get a little bit better coverage. I went really light here with the can as far away as possible from the pom-poms so as not to overpower them with the light green. I then went back and did another light coat of the primer gray, followed by another light coat of the hunter green. In both cases, I held the can far enough away so that the coverage would be light and just provide highlights. Once that dried, there was still a little bit of red showing through, but nothing that I thought was going to be a problem. At this point, they still looked a little too uniform, so I decided to add some ground foam just to break things up. I did this by giving everything a pretty good coat of Elmer's Craft Bond spray glue and then just randomly putting on a couple of different colors of Woodland Scenic ground foam. I'll put an affiliate link to the Elmer's Craft Bond glue into the description below as well. Just a reminder, this channel covers model railroading, including planning, hints, tips, how-tos, and updates. Click the subscribe button so you never miss an episode, and press the bell so you'll get notified when there's new content available. Now that those are finished, I'm just going to install these in a couple of different places here, as if the American Can Company had put down the bushes. 
but I'm also going to make it look a little bit like they just sort of forgot they were there and never paid much attention to them. There's my finished bushes, and I'm just going to randomly pick some here and just plant them in there. They're still a little sticky from the spray glue. <laughs> sticky enough that they're sticking to my finger and not the layout. So I will actually install those uh, after the spray glue dries a little bit more. And then I'll come back and show you how things look when I'm finished. So I went ahead and installed the bushes along the, the building there. I wanted to show you how I, I ended up going about doing that, even though I did it while the little pom-pom balls were sticky. Drop a bush right here. All I did was using my dental pick and my tweezers, I just peeled a, a ball off of here and then just dropped it down. Use the dental pick. Even when it was sticky, I, I could get the the tweezers in there and put the dental pick down and just give it a, a good push to settle it in place. So it just gives it another little bit of texture and color in that area. Just something to break it up. And for 50 cents for the package plus a few cents worth of glue, paint, and brown foam, I think these these turned out uh, pretty well. They're not going to be any kind of groundbreaking bushes that are going to compete with high-end scenery materials, but for a few cents a piece, I think they do a pretty good job. So that's all for this episode. Just a quick little installment to show you how those bushes came about. If you've ever done anything similar, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. That is also the place for questions and suggestions. In the description, you'll also find links to help support the channel. One is for my Patreon page, where for as little as $2 a month, you can get some additional videos, some additional goodies, and a whole bunch of other interesting things that come along with membership. The second is the Pixel Depot merchandise store where you'll be able to find shirts, mugs, bags, and other things with Pixel Depot logos and slogans on them. Please check those out and support the channel. There are also links there to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Finally, you can check out more Pixel Depot videos in the links over here. I'm Joe Parker of the Pixel Depot. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you'll meet me next time in the train room.